A few weeks back, we did a tutorial on using GPXC to uh, boot, net boot off a floppy. We did it in a virtual machine there, but I thought I'd take a uh, moment here and do it on a real life machine. So I pulled an old machine out of my garage. Wish I had an older one, uh, but I tossed out the really old ones not too long ago. Uh, here's my floppy. So here's the theoretical situation. I like to make up situations that. Uh, make it difficult to do stuff and then figure out solutions to them. Just helps me learn even though the actual scenario is unlikely. But scenario, old computer, floppy drive, we'll pretend the CD-ROM drives and the USB ports don't work, otherwise we would boot off them. Even on older machines where the motherboard may not support booting off USB, if you could boot off a, a CD-ROM or a floppy, you can piggyback off that onto a USB, although you won't get as good as results as you will on a newer machine since it'll probably be USB 1 in those cases. But, scenario, we do have an Ethernet plug on the back. I have a floppy here. I set it to grab the kernel. Uh, we'll first connect to the internet, uh, or at least the local network, uh, then grab from the server in the other room the kernel and, uh, and the initial RAM disk in this case. Uh, the core version, or not the core version, but the base version of Slitez, which is just going to be a shell, uh, but you could do it with a full desktop environment as well, take a little bit longer to load. Um, but once we get the shell, we could theoretically install any other op Linux operating system through uh, the running operating system in the RAM. Uh, probably one of the harder things about this is theoretically if this computer will only boot off floppy, um, or the network, how do I make the floppy disk? You would have to find another computer with a floppy drive, which I do have more than one. I actually created this one with this machine. I loaded it up. I actually have to the hard drive already installed CrunchBang Linux. But um, let's go ahead and let me pop this in while I'm talking. So I'll pop it in. Default boot uh, device already on this machine is the floppy, but you can change that in the BIOS if it's not. And we'll go ahead and start it up. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to load up and it's going to find that floppy drive and already it's uh, loading the image from the drive. Right there it says load ROM image. I know you probably can't see that in the camera. So it's loading that to RAM. Now it's starting up GPXC. It's getting an IP address from my router. It's pulled the kernel and it's pulled the RAM disk, the uh, file system already. And here we go, it's already uh, loaded up the uh, kernel, and it's loaded up the RAM disk, and now it's loading up the uh, operating system. Already it's booted. I can hit enter here, select those options, and it took from the time that the kernel and file system were downloaded, approximately Slitaz times at 8 seconds. Uh, once again, that's once the, the RAM disk and, uh, and kernel are loaded, that's how long it took for the operating system to boot. Uh, so not bad, um, and of course I do have, grab my keyboard here, I'll log in as root with root and root, uh, I can use Tez PKG um, recharge to uh, recharge, uh, download a new Tez PKG is the uh, package manager. I'm just refreshing the list and after that we'll do, if that's successful, then we'll use Tez PKG to get and install nmap because it's not installed by default. So just to show you, we are connected to the internet. So it has, does, uh, does recognize the, the, the um, network card here. So yeah, just using that tutorial that we did a few weeks ago, hopefully I put an annotation directly to that tutorial because it wasn't just last week, I think it was two or three weeks ago. Um, we were able to create a floppy disk image uh, that's connected to the internet local network and pulled a uh, image and kernel off of it. Uh, already it's downloaded so now nmap is installed and we can take the floppy disk out as I just did because once once it's pulled the image and the um, the the file system image and the kernel image that is uh, and it starts booting it you can take the floppy disk out Actually, even before that, probably, because it loads to RAM. Once it starts going, you pull the floppy disk out, and you're good to go. So right now, this operating system is not installed to the hard drive. It's running in RAM. Uh, I still have CrunchBang Linux installed to the hard drive. 
I could install Slitaz using its installer, or I can pull other images off the internet now if I wanted and uh, use DD or uncompress them, whatever technique I want to use depending on what, uh, um, what the installer for that distro does. Uh, one I could do, I think I've shown this in previous tutorials years ago, uh, I could go to the Debian website, I could pull the mini ISO, which is its net boot, and I can DD that, DD that to the hard drive, and next time I boot, it will boot off the hard drive and load that installer to RAM, and then actually do a Debian install to the hard drive, so that's one way to do it. Uh, and so that's just it. I just wanted to show you this done in, on a real machine, not just in a virtual machine. Show you that it does detect my network card, no problem. Again, theoretical situation. Uh, the chances of you having a machine so old that it has a floppy drive but doesn't have a working CD-ROM drive or USB drives, chances are it's probably not going to have a NIC card in it. But you may have put one in it. So I don't know if this machine originally had one or if I put it in there, but that's it. I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration and I hope that you found it useful. Again, making these images, I showed you how to do that in the previous tutorial using Romomatic dot, can't if it's dot org or dot com, and uh, it will generate the image to you. Copy it over to a floppy disk and boot from it and you're good to go. Thanks for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There should be a link in the description to my site. And if you enjoyed the series of tutorials, be sure to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss anything else. Uh, and again, I apologize for I don't usually like pointing cameras at computer screens. Oh, that's my daughter. She finished her lunch. The, I don't like pointing cameras at the computer screen like this, but there's really no other way for me to record this in a real life situation uh, other than pointing the camera at it. So again, thank you for watching and I hope that you have a great day.